So this is a, a patient who has, we've simulated here, a supination adduction type injury potentially where the patient has a lateral malleolar fracture. Weber A is really amenable to this. What I learned was that in some of the trauma centers that in order to save time when someone has six or eight or 10 fractures, as opposed to opening up and putting plate and screw fixation, if it's a relatively stable fracture that's relatively horizontal in particular, and there's pretty good length obtained, you can do a minimally invasive technique to save time in a polytrauma patient or a geriatric patient who has very soft bone. So this is a uh, patient who has a, a bimalleolar fracture that we've uh, said this. Essentially, if you have a stable lateral malleolar fracture in a polytrauma patient and you don't have um, necessarily a lot of bone loss or vertical shear issues, you can perform minimally invasive fixation on the lateral malleolus uh, and not have to open up and put a big plate in. And what, what I've noted is that when we do intramedullary fixation, like with a fibular rod or with this uh, intramedullary type technique we're going to describe here, they actually heal faster. There's less soft tissue stripping. So those of us who remember the basic AO principles of LCDCP plates, this kind of falls along with that, where you're trying not to actually create uh, blood supply issues up against the plate, uh, up against the bone, and limit the blood supply. So we're going to put a small incision distally here um, at the tip of the lateral malleolus. And, you know, not too small. Obviously, we're going minimally invasive, but it's minimally invasive as it is. So what we'll do here is uh, essentially make a small opening, and typically we would use a bovi to uh, clear away this tissue and, and get down to the lateral malleolus just at the very tip here. And, uh, of course, you have to be careful about knife please landmarks and danger zones and things are uh, the perineal tendons, and uh, they're slightly posterior to us right now. And uh, they don't necessarily have to be visualized for this approach, but if you want to, that's fine, especially in the beginning. And what we'll do is we'll take a guide pin now from a, in this case, a 5.5 millimeter headless screw fixation system and um, put that at the tip of the lateral malleolus here. And, and again, using a soft tissue guide here is a little difficult sometimes, but um, in this case, we'll, by palpation, essentially want to go intramedullary on AP and lateral fixation. So we'll go back to the fluoro shot. And that's always going to be a little bit lateral. It just tends to be that way that we want to do that for safety reasons. But the entry site is perfect. So that's where you want to be on the tip of that lateral malleolus. And then we want to kind of raise our hand a little bit and go down the shaft here so we're not outside. And we'll do a lateral shot here as well. It sees that we're going right up the canal there. So let's have the wire driver, please. Raise my hand slightly. Then we'll check our shot. And so it always it deflects there a little bit, approximately occasionally. Now what we can do is uh, just make sure, again, we're not out the cortex here. We're intramedullary as we are. And uh, let's have the wire driver empty for a second, please. We can actually back up here a little bit and then advance in reverse. So what that does do is it'll skive against that internal cortex. That's about as far as we need to go. So this is kind of the same kind of entry guide pin technique for those of you familiar with the fibular rod. Same kind of thing. Depth gauge, please. So we just want to get beyond the fracture site. It doesn't have to be very long. So we'll measure our depth here at the tip. And if we measure our depth, in this case, it's a 7-0, a 5.5 millimeter 7-0 screw. And uh, yeah, we can, we can make it much shorter than that because, again, we don't have to go all the way to that cortex. So and depending on patient size, you can use a big screw, the 6-7s, the 7-5 or the 5.5, again, depending on patient size and intramedullary canal. So that measures 5.0, and uh, we can advance that a little bit. We'll check it under fluoro, make sure we'll be on the site. Probably advance it just a little bit here. So we have the lateral buttress drill and the soft tissue guide so we don't wrap things up. So this drill can drill the entry drill for the cortex for the 5.5 system. So that gets us heading in the right direction. That shows, again, we're just through the tip there, and it hasn't gone beyond the fracture site or the osteotomy site, whichever it may be. Again, supination adduction type injury, Weber A, where it's a horizontal fracture, this is perfect. We're a polytrauma patient, and so uh, this provides, again, there's no blood supply stripping. It's amazing how fast they heal. And this is like reaming the canal in a tibial fracture. So we have our external depth here, and so we'll have a 5-0 screw, so let's put it back under fluoro here and we'll confirm. 
that we're up the canal there. We're not anterior posterior and we're right in the canal there. So what we'll see is that, again, this is a great technique for horizontal fracture, supination, adduction. Let's have the screw, please. And it's fast. So in a polytrauma patient where you're trying to do six different things, get the patient on and off the table real quick, you can do that real easily. So here's our tapered. We have uh, cutting flutes distally, and uh, it's a self-tapping screw. And then it gets wider, and the thread and pitch diameter change uh, laterally on the outside, so it provides adequate compression. So in this case, given the patient's size, we're using a 5.5. Five. And uh, what we can do, of course, is change size according to patient diameter and patient fit. And what we're doing is we're going to cross this fracture slash osteotomy site here in a second. Okay, good. And you see again, these are self-tapping, so it's advancing and starting to feel some resistance there. And then we've crossed the fracture site. And what you'll see is just enough compression to close it down, but not too much. And it's flush. There's no prominence of the plate. There's nothing, no irritation of the perineal tendons. And he's getting some good resistance now, just kind of like the Jones fracture. If you look at that fibula, it looks like a fifth metatarsal base. And there you have it. So this has, it kind of looks like the base of a fifth metatarsal, if you look at it real carefully here, and that you're, you know, entirely intramedullary. There's phenomenal compression. There's no prominence. And we haven't stripped the blood supply at all. So those supination adduction injuries, the Weber A's, are treated typically in the, in the literature and the textbooks non-operatively as they should be, but they go into non-union sometimes. And in a polytrauma patient, where you want to mobilize them real quickly, um, you want to fix it, basically. You can't cast them and expect to mobilize them. So you have a patient who has you know, pelvis fracture, head, head injuries, spinal cord issues, and you want them to be able to ambulate on this stable fracture. This is very minimally invasive. There's less stripping of the tissues, and they can walk on it pretty fast. It's an axial load type thing. So you think of this as perhaps even a load sharing type device as opposed to a load bearing device. A plate is a load bearing device, especially locking plates. This will not create stress shielding. It's basically like a you know, tibial rod or a fibular rod, and you'll get some more axial loading out of it and walk them even quicker. So we close with a 3 PDS and a 3 monocryl, and then and we can advance them to a full weight bearing within two weeks with a cast boot and start them in physical therapy. And again, the advantage is in a polytrauma patient is being able to move them uh, pretty quickly.